Hi, it's Jenny from Ginger Ninja Crafts and I am here with the first of my L journal videos. So what follows next is how I got to this stage. So you'll see me make the signature up, popping it, how I sewed it into my um, cover, which is made from a paper bag. And then a little speeded up section at the end is me putting together the decoration for the front of my cover. And this is from um, a napkin from the lovely Andrea. Um, if you watched my last video, you will have seen me opening up, but that's the, and I really didn't do very much to it because it's so beautiful. So if you want to see how it got to this stage, then keep watching. Um, and I'm sure there will be many more videos. I think I'm probably just going to keep playing with this actually just now. So you'll see more um, very soon of me decorating this up. And um, I'm not going to rush it. I want to just take my time filling it up. Um, I never really known what to do with journals. Like these kind of journals I have like diaries that I've kept sort of my writings in but they tend to be a bit of therapy really um and not ones that I kind of look back and read um I kind of get stuff out onto the page and then um it's quite I don't really want to go back and read through that stuff so I didn't really want it to be like that so what I'm really just going to use this for and the more I look at it, the more I think I've stuffed it with too many pages, but it's fine. I'll probably make some kind of belly band thing to try and keep it under control, but I don't care. Um, so yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do is decorate it up with lots of owly spreads. That's my plan, to just decorate the pages up with owly bits and pieces because... You know, as you'll probably have seen from my stash, I collect owly related things and people have sent me some gorgeous owly bits and pieces. So um, this isn't going to be finished in a week sort of thing. It's something that will grow over time. So yeah, so keep watching to see how it got to this point if you're interested. And I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Hi there, it's Jenny from Ginger Ninja Crafts and I am here with um, a video about my owl journal. So just to kind of explain, because I have done a few bits before I turn the camera on. So the base for my um, owl journal is a, like a sandwich bag. It's like a long paper bag. like that that's got like a, a flat bottom um and it is how long it's 30 centimeters by 15 and a half centimeters so the first thing i did to get this ready for using is i chopped off this bit here i guess you could keep it as a sort of tuck spot or something but anyway i chopped it off and i just um kind of tidied up this edge two so I had something like this um, and I glued down these flappy bits so that you don't have that at the top and the bottom and then I've popped a little bit of patterned paper on so this is going to be the inside um, this lovely owly paper and then this is going to be the outside and this one on the outside is um, it's a bit kind of thicker you see I've glued in that bit it's kind of on a um, maybe 200 GSM or something um, and the inside is a bit less thick but you'll see it gives quite a nice um, it's, well, you can't see, but it's quite sturdy for a cover. Now, the other thing I want to do is just glue these little 
flappy bits to one side a bit so that they don't get in the way because this is a nice little pocket that I've got here so I'm just going to just pick a side and glue along and obviously I can't get right in deep to the inside of the pocket but hopefully if I can just get that front bit done that will be better than nothing um, so pop those down now I have gathered my pages for inside my journal um, so this is going to just be the one signature and I'm going to stitch it in. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So some of these are printables. Um, I downloaded some, a set of Etsy and I will, I will find that um, listing from Etsy and put it in the description for this video. So I printed some double sided. Um, this is a bit smaller and it's a bit of a vintage map. This one, so these are kind of bigger, obviously they're sort of A4, but I thought it worked quite well with them just peeking round the corner there. And then there's some sort of ledger paper inside. I think maybe the ledger is from a different set. I've got a bit of old book page. Um, so I'm just lining these up. Um, along the middle fold and again this one I've just double side printed and I've got a piece of vellum if anybody saw the video where I shared the little rose journal I made for rose a uh, paper craft and rose then this is basically what I did for her hers as well um, another printable page so I'm kind of trying to alternate pages that I've printed with kind of different types of paper this is a doily and I've folded it in the middle and folded up an edge to make two little tuck spots so I just glued down that centre bit there and let that dry before I try and stick it in because obviously with all the holes you might get it um, seeping through and then another little printable page, another, whoops, another book page, and then a couple of printables. Oh, and that's ledger to ledger, so I'll do it this way. I don't like having the same thing, although then it's ended up in the middle, but that's okay, because that can be a a wasp spread like that. So that is my pages. Now these are 14 and a half inches tall and the the printable ones anyway it's 22 and a half inches there to there. Now I'm gonna just clip these together. And um, what I learned to do was to create a little um, template for punching your holes. So I'm going to take a bit of scrap paper, here this will do, and my guillotine and cut it at 14 and a half centimetres because that is... the height of my pages. Now I'm going to fold it in half down the middle lengthways like so like that and then I'm going to fold it lengthways in half because I'm going to have three holes in this and I want it all to be 
um, lining up from the centre so that my pages sit in the centre of my cover, if that makes sense. So I've got one line here and then I'm just going to take a wee pencil and just score that. And then I want to have halfway up here. And then the same from the top down. So that's my three points. And the spine. So it can sit right in the middle here. Now I have got this little bit of foam which I think is meant to be, you're meant to use like the sort of ball tools and die cuts to create flowers. You know you can do that whole thing which I never do but what you will see I use it for is as a kind of pokey tool thing. So I'm going to take that now. And I'm going to take my glamorous pokey tool from the lovely Dawn Sutton and I'm going to make a hole and kind of waggle it a wee bit. There we go. Like so. So you'll see that the holes are along that edge and then I can just make sure that they poke through nicely like so. Now this one, oh see I've done it wrong I should have gone for the length of this bit but that's okay. Um, So what I'll do is I'll just do one for this um, and line up with the centre of this cover spine. Oh, you always make a mistake when you, or I do anyway, when I get the switch the camera on. So. So this is my spine going in here. Here is my, my centre point. Like so. Line it up top and bottom. Pop it in here. Glamorous pokey tool. There we go. Now, I'll just line that up with that one. So that is now lined up. Am I still on camera? Yeah. And then I'll just go in with this one and that one. So there we go. So now I've got holes in my cover and holes in my signature and the thing I've forgotten to get out is some embroidery thread so I'll just pause you for a second. Okay I'm back. So what I've got is just some embroidery thread um, or you can use <coughs> excuse me basically you can use anything you've got um, if you've got baker's twine or some string as long as it fits through the eye of your needle um, excuse me have a wee sip so I'm using these yarn needles um, I suppose they're probably the kind of needle you would darn your socks with oh. 
got a kitten dragging a toy if you hear noise in the background. They're hilarious. They've got a bed which ends up in every room in the house. They like drag it from room to room and they've got this little toy. which used to have three fishes on it and now only has one because they are hooligans um, and they drag that around like you know a stick with string elasticy things on it and so I've got my embroidery thread threaded up I want this to the the tie to be on the outside so I'm just going to push that through the middle I've got it the right way up with my patterned pages. Find the middle hole in my signature and thread it through. Now, it's always a little bit um, tricky until you get it kind of lined up. The first sort of um, first time you thread through each of these is a little bit of a job to find them but that's okay you can just make sure to tighten it up once you've done that so I'm gonna go now to the bottom I'm not sure if this is textbook how you're meant to do it I did follow an instruction tutorial the first time I made a journal like this um, but that was some time ago. So yes, you can see I've kind of pulled that bit tight there. I've pulled it tight at the back and then I'm going to go back in through the middle and it should be, yeah, much easier. So that's gone out there and then I'm going to go in here. See, it's a wee bit fiddly, but worth it. There we go. I'm gonna pop it back out here. So I've done it like a long ways each time and now I'm going to do one each where it's just um, the outside and the middle and the outside and the middle. I suppose you could even do like wool or something if you were... If you're wanting to, although I'm not sure if wool is quite as strong. Um, right now, one more that will come out of the middle so I can tie it there in a bow. And as I say, you might have a different method, and that's fine. Um, this is just what I do, and so far it has kind of worked. So I'm just going to put my needle back in the package that tucked in there so there now I've got pages on it and I've got my two ends on the outside so I can just tie them in a little bow and it's probably going to be quite a stuffed journal I might have put too many pages in but I don't mind if a journal's kind of stuffed I can always pop some kind of elastic around it or something um let me see do a wee double knot and then I might do a little double bow just with little I'm sure all the people that make proper journals are horrified at my <laughs> techniques, but 
as I say, this is just what I do and I said I would share it. Um, so this is kind of step one. So there we go. So that is a double bow. Maybe I will tie it one more time. Um, there we go. And then I'm just going to cut these wee ends and pop them away before they get caught by a kitten. So, here we go. My little basis for my owl journal. Not terribly owly as of yet. Um, just this wee one poking his head out and is there another one? Yeah, this one on the back. So, what I did check was that my beautiful um, stitched book page owly pocket from the lovely Sherry. I did check that that fits in. So the other nice thing about these pockets is that whatever you pop inside them also helps to make that um, cover a bit more sturdy. So I've also got... Um, Oh, I don't know where I've put it, but I've also got a little owly postcard, so I might stick that in the back here um, as another kind of way of, of adding some sturdiness. Um, so you can just pull this out. Um, I love how this is stenciled. It's got wee snowflake stamps that I think have been heat embossed, and it's got like shimmery splatters and the owl's head is also stamped out onto book page with the hat and I added a I popped that that was from lovely Andrea and then there's these little wooden owls in that so my next phase is to make myself a focal image for this front cover um and Maybe I will do that just now. I'll I'll stop this video and then I'll see how I get on for time. And if I get it done, I'll add it into this video. And if not, it'll be the next video. Okay, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.